A thrilling new drama is coming to KPIX, and it centers around FBI agent Clarice Starling. Rebecca Breeds, the star. Uh, star Ask Clarice joins us now. And Rebecca, thanks for being here. Congratulations, first off, on the new role. Thank you. I know it's very exciting. It is exciting. And I think for most people, when they hear that name, it obviously sounds familiar. The show stems from the movie Silence of the Lambs, which was a crazy thriller, and it picks up just about a year from where the movie left off. So tell us a little bit about the premise of where Clarice is now in her life and as she moves forward as a FBI agent. Yeah, so like you said, the, the show picks up a year after the events of The Silence of the Lambs, which, um, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's okay because, you know, the, the show can stand alone in and of itself, but we also reference the film so much that you will absolutely put the pieces together and know exactly what happened. But I think that's also really exciting if you do know and love the film, because it's not like, oh, it's 20 years on and that's a distant memory. It's like, no, this literally just happened. And as a show, we throw back and reference to the film so much that it's really a continuation of, of a world that if you love, you're going to love the show because it continues on um, with so much of the original setup, so much of the original characters. Um, and so Clarice, it was pretty traumatizing, the events in Buffalo Bill's basement. Also, there's a lot of press and she's not a show pony. So she's trying to hide out kind of away from all that stuff. Um, but it, there looks to be a new serial killer on the loose. So Ruth Martin, who was the mother of the woman in the world, Catherine Martin, she's now um, the Attorney General of the United States. And she goes, I know the woman for the job. She calls Clarice out of behavioral sciences basement and throws her back in the field, kind of against her will, but you know, she this is her job. So she steps up and does it. And she finds herself uh, in the VICAP, um, which is the Violent Criminal Apprehension Program uh, run by Paul Krenla, who she actually kind of showed up in, in the film. She beat him uh, to Buffalo Bill's basement. So that's a very interesting dynamic. So now she's in, she's in the VICAP team. She's thrown back in the field, but there's all this trauma that she hasn't dealt with that um, she's trying to suppress and do her job, but it keeps kind of jumping up and getting her in moments where she, you know, that kind of gets the better of her. So we're, we're going to see her have to start to deal with those things to be able to be the agent that she wants to be out in the field and, you know, fight for justice. So it sounds like a really, really cool role. And I think they did such a good job with just the previews and the promotion, just the music they use. It looks so like psychologically thrilling. I'm very excited about it. How did you prepare for this? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I think getting the accent brought the character home for me. So that was such a huge part of it. Um, the other thing is that we have this incredible resource, Thomas Harris's book, The Silence of the Lambs. If you haven't read it, Oh my gosh, the book is as amazing, if not like more than the film, because it goes into so much more detail and every page is a new gold mine. I have, you know, Clarice's, all her backstory. I have her inner monologue. I have a sense of humor. I have how she deals with men and different situations. She finds herself in her best friend and that relationship. So, I mean, the preparation was, was easy because I had so much information about who she is. Um, that once they kind of could understand that, now it's just a matter of, um, you know, grounding myself in 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 all those in all those truths, but then continuing to explore and unfold who she is. You know, we get to continue to explore this character that we know and love so well. I'm so glad you recommended the book. I haven't read it because I don't know if I could sleep at night if I did, but it does. I've heard such good things about it. You nail the accent just watching the previews, but is there a little bit of pressure playing such an iconic role that Jodie Foster made so famous? I mean, the I don't really think about that because I don't, I honestly don't have time to worry about whether or not, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing it justice. I just, I keep my head in the, in the work and I, um, you know, do the best, do the best I can with the character. And I um, anchor it in the truth that we know from the book. But, you know, for me, I kind of feel like that is paying homage to the incredible performers that have gone before me in this role, because that's exactly what they would have done. They wouldn't have worried about the pressure of this or that. They would have just done the work with the character, based it from the truth in the book that we know of her and done their best to bring the character to life. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I can only, 
I can only do this, uh, like this is my instrument. I can only use the instrument that I have um, and do it the best I possibly can. And like I said, do it, do it with the most respect for the character in the book that I can. And yeah, in doing that, I, I feel like that I honor Jodi and Julianne in, in my performance in, in the way that I approach the work. Uh, you do. You do. So, I mean, just watching the previews, you really, really do such an amazing job. Really quick. I know we're running short on time. Is there going to be some element of two of how she sort of deals with her family life from the past and how that kind of plays into her job? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. That is um, a lot of the focus of season one. Um, it's such a huge thing that she is kind of repressed to survive. But I think I always see you know, the events of the film, meeting Hannibal and, and going into Buffalo Bill's basement were kind of triggers for her. They were catalysts for this trauma that she's been suppressing. She kind of can't escape it anymore. It kind of comes back and gets her now. I, I kind of think like going into Buffalo Bill's basement was kind of like going into the basement of her psyche and she meets the monsters looming in her own psychological, um, you know, mind. So, yeah, we can't avoid these things anymore. She can't. They're, they're getting in the way of the job and she needs to start dealing with the traumas from her past. So it's wonderful we get to explore the backstory that we know so well from, well, we know a little bit about it from the movie. We know a lot about it from the book, but we also continue to explore and expand on that and bring that into the present day and watch this incredible, cap incredibly capable, intelligent, empathetic, grown woman in a very real environment, like working in the FBI, um, you know, also have to unpack the monsters in herself as much as deal with the monsters in her environment. So um, I think she's so brave. She's honestly my hero um, <laughs> for, for how she, you know, deals with <laughs> things. And um, it's really amazing that we get a series now to do this because there's, you know, so much to explore in this character. Uh, Rebecca, it looks so good. Congratulations. We're looking forward to it. You starring as Clarice and the show airs right here. Uh, the premiere episode Thursday on February 11th on KPIX. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you enjoy the show.